All right. Jeskai Mutate. Um, this is a deck that we've played a little bit of before that has some cards that allow us to attack the format in a reasonable way, I think. So Stone Coil Serpent here, while its protection for multicolor is a little bit awkward because we can't mutate King Caesar onto it, it's very good in general against all these Tefri decks that are running around in, in the format. Someone in chat just asked about Hushbringer. Hushbringer is just a really reasonable card to mutate onto. This is a flying lifelink body, so it's evasive and it gains you life against aggro. It's also very good against all these Agent of Treachery and Yorian decks that are running around in the format. Past that, um, it actually can be helpful with our own our own creature here, Marauding Raptor. So Hushbringer stops Marauding Raptor from hitting your creatures when they come into play, which is kind of fun. So like, if you have this out, you can play Hushbringer and she doesn't die because she stops. She calms, she calms the Raptor chat. She's like the Raptor Whisperer. I'm interested to see, based on looking at this deck, if we're going to be able to keep up with the Yorian decks. That's kind of like the litmus test for the format. Can we be aggressive enough to get under them with the back of Hushbringer being a little bit of, uh, being a little bit disruptive? We got four disdainful strokes out of the sideboard here. That should hopefully help with that as well. Let's go ahead and dive on into the ladder here. If the last two hours have been any indicator, we should, uh, shouldn't have to wait too long to find out how our Yorian matchup is. No, I, I pretty much only... Oh, you guys are talking to each other. Never mind. Um, sure. do this for two to start and put C Dasher on something that can't be Tef Reed. This is actually a great draw because I get to do this into this now. Is it crazy to put is it crazy to put this under this so it doesn't get Conqueror's Death? Probably Conqueror's Death is still pretty far away and I'd lose a lot of points on attacks. I think, I think I'm supposed to put it over so I'm hitting for four per attack. I think Lavinia could be a viable hate card for Fires of Invention. No. The Fires, the Fires of Invention decks already play a number of cards that incidentally kill, kill Lavinia. They can still just pay mana, and they play cards like Deafening Clarion, among other things that just like make that not very good. We've run out of uncommon wild cards. So that's the thing that just happened. Sea Dasher. Sure. 
<laughs> That's okay. My wife hates my voice too, Pure Punker. You let her let her know she's not alone. All right, and that that really kind of feels like how these matchups go on average a lot of the time. It feels like I need to clench and hope they don't have a... I need to clench and hope they don't have a sweeper for a turn. And if they don't have the sweeper, you're okay. And if they do, you just kind of get run over. I think we just cut Cub Warden for Disdainful Stroke here and click Submit. Well, ain't that a pile of tapped lands? What's the opportunity cost of having Amari as a companion game one? Pretty, pretty high. The card's black, black, Ostin. You can't just like, like you can't splash a double colored card. It's just not how magic works. Watch me, sure. You do you. We do we do have mana vault sleeves. They are they are very pretty. Well, the good news is Dasher on here lets us cut through their walls. If you're sick of trying to mid-range people in standard, I'd encourage you to try some of the aggro decks that we've played recently. Just Kai Winoda, Just Kai Luris, uh, Just Kai Cycling. A lot, of, a lot of sweet Just Kai colored ones. Jury's, jury's out on this Just Kai one for me, but the others are all plenty sweet. Opponent's deck, if you haven't seen it before, is just Kai Luka. They look to put Luka into play and then turn their token into an Agent of Treachery. Any any of their tokens guaranteed turn into Agent of Treachery, if you haven't seen the opponent's deck before. There were a number of people and professional players that were doing well with this archetype in the Magic Fest event this weekend. Crokeys was streaming with it before that as well. So I expect this archetype will probably pick up in popularity by a good bit if, uh, if it has a good run. Okay. Let's get to go Raptor into Baby Godzilla. 
And to shock this in, hold up stroke. How all in are they in the Luka play? And not very in my experience. They're just, they're just, they're a just guy fires control deck without it. How do they turn their tokens into agent? Luca? And they can also just like cast agent of treachery. In their deck, they have Elspeth Conquer's death along with uh, along with Yorian still. And like this card's really good against their sweepers, but like if we don't have stroke for Conquer's death, we just eat it, right? When it happens. And they're at enough mana now that they could Tefri plus Conquer's death in the same turn, which would be really bad. Alright, we're able to play through that there nicely, so let's sweep. Kirky said it was the best deck in the format on Twitter. I mean, whatever whatever Crokies is currently playing, he proclaims is the best deck, right? That's just that's just how his channel slash stick works. The Naya Winota deck in Historic is super real. Been liking that one a lot. It's almost more satisfying to just kill them with Marauders than it is to steal their stuff. I mean, that's, that's part of his bit, right? Like, hot takes, he's always playing the best thing. He's the best thing since sliced bread. That's just, like, part of his Twitch persona. I don't know. I don't know if I take he's sarcastic, like, 100% of the time. Like, people who try and pass themselves off as that, it's one of those, it's Schrodinger's asshole, right? It was, it was a joke based on how, how the outcome was. If, if I said something offensive and you laughed, I was just a joke, don't take it so hard. But if I said something offensive and you didn't laugh and you were okay with it, okay, let's run with it. Alright, so that's a pretty decent pickup. So I can shock this in. And then I can play lunch this. Time, Daddy. Lunch time. Lunch time, Daddy. What'd you bring me? Thank you, Jacob. You're welcome. I appreciate you, oldest son. What's underneath my paper towel? I've got sandwiches. And look at this brownie bites and a yogurt. Thank you, Jacob. My family's great, Chad. I love them. Yeah, Jake. Jake's good about closed doors. It's the other one that doesn't close the door. It is. There is. There is an entire. I've been gifted an entire little basket, Chad. Look at that. It has sandwiches in it. It's adorable. Thank you, wife. Okay, so we just like mutate this. Oh no! Oh, I can't mutate snap decks onto here, right? That's fine though. We'll mutate onto here. I need a food child. <laughs> they're expensive to maintain, but they're they're worth it. All right, so Tefri is good here against their foxes. Um, Clarion's probably okay. The mutate doesn't work because this is protection from multicolored, and mutate mutate targets. Probably a Hushbringer out matchup. Shark's good here too. Uh, 
I'm gonna throw an octopus on the draw. Let's do this. All right, I'm gonna mute and hide myself really quick so I can take my teeth out. I think we keep this because if we draw even a single mutate spell, we get to loot through the extraneous lands, which is nice. And I have two, three as a curve as is. Tefri's very good against turn one fox. Perfect. You love, you love to see it. Man, I have a lot of choices here. I think I'm supposed to Tefri first. Because I want to Shark after I King Caesar. So that way Shark can trigger King Caesar a second time. Because remember, this happens every time you mutate it. Hey, Isabeth. Thanks for the two months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. So, next turn, we get to do this and this and just end their whole career, right? Game is, game is over next turn if they can't kill our thing. If you mutate Cub Ward on the snack decks, you do, Vernash. In fact, something that often happens in here is you mutate King Caesar onto um, Hushbringer, which also has lifelink. Something that frequently happens. Oh no, there's only one island in here. That's super awkward. I did not, did not realize that. That's fine. I'm gonna draw an untapped blue source. That was a tap blue source. So I wanted to mutate this onto it as well. That's fine. They're still pretty dead. So deal four damage to you, bounce you. You raided the apex mutators. Um, 
I think what's it called? The teamer one's probably the best. Snapdax is a close second. And then um what's his name? It's probably third. Um the uh bio quartz. Yeah, bad, bad rock or whatever it's called is real bad. <clears throat> so we get to loot here. Bin this. Say under. This game's over, right? We get to kill this. Bounce this. Smack them for eight. Draw two cards. Howmph. Fight spell was de -drought. Yeah, maybe. I think I'm saving this last land to cycle. We'll play out Serpent as a 5-5 five five here post-combat. Because remember, it's too cheaper, but it's going to take 4 when it comes into play. <clears throat> we are almost out of gas at this point. There's no blocks, huh? It doesn't take damage from King Caesar. That's great. Hoaglandia does not have any shillionaires currently. Based on when channel points was in introduced and people started collecting, the first shillionaire will likely be sometime in the next uh, three to four months, depending on if people keep watching at the same volume and I keep streaming at the same volume. Hey, Tide to Grims. Thanks for the 60 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Another Yorian deck. See how this goes. We're able to beat the Just Guy. Just Guy Luca Yorian deck. If 
when will we have billionaires? Yeah, they're about the same, right? They're both they're both a lot of money. A Jess Britton, thanks for the brand new prime support. Welcome to Hoaglandia. So I actually don't want to play Hushbringer this turn because they could Uro me next turn, which would not be great. I put the octopus under baby Godzilla because I actually wanted the converted mana cost on baby Godzilla. <clears throat> so leaving, leaving Godzilla on top means my card draw doesn't get removed by, means my card draw doesn't get removed by Elspeth Conqueror's death. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, they didn't have the sweeper on four here. Would really like to draw a snap dax or another big mutator here. <clears throat> so want to draw. If we draw a snap dax, we can finish this off. Do not harm my scrolls. Deals four to a creature planeswalker. Yep. So we'll do this on uh, here. And then we'll do this, and we'll mutate this onto here. And there's a phoenix in our bin from a counterspell earlier. So we get swept here, which feels bad. Apparently it was one card, one card under whatever Tabio drew. I get to bring, I get to bring this back next turn. <clears throat> Probably put a four four stone coil into play too. So, this actually can't be blocked by this, which is great. Am I supposed to expose this to Conqueror's death? I feel like the answer is no. Could go either way on that, though. Mind. 
Yep, there's the Conqueror's Death. <clears throat> In consideration of mutating on the Phoenix for more feathers. What does mutating onto the Phoenix do with the 4-5 staring me down? Why is why is that useful? How's that how is that helpful to winning the game? Snapdax win. Snapdax does not win. You cannot mutate Snapdax onto Stone Coil Serpent. That would be cheating. And cheating is bad, chat. Don't cheat. So they are allowed to eat my phoenix, and then they take 10, and I draw a card. With a Conqueror's Death this turn, they, uh, they die to this, and they can't age in a treachery, because there's a, uh, there's a Hushbringer hiding underneath King Caesar here. <clears throat> Hey, Aeson. Thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, I can get that bumped up after I'm done today, Ace Tiger. And again, the fact that I tucked Sea Dasher under the Stone Quail Serpent really paying off here. All right, they're still dead, right? They trade with King Caesar in combat, or they chumped King Caesar in combat, sorry, and then I trample over for one with the Stone Quail Serpent. Right? Yeah, okay. Gosh, the games where the 80 card deck doesn't have their four mana sweeper on curve. Are pretty good for us. I feel like I feel like I want to put this split in the other direction. I mean, I'm not even sure that Cub Warden's very good in general. Like this card's not very good against these uh, against these Yori Index, right? I think just swapping it for the Stainful Stroke makes a lot of sense. I don't think I want Trawler and Conqueror's Death. I'm not even sure these cards are good in the sideboard, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it is good against Black Red. I think I think I just want to swap it so it's four Destroya, three of these. Now, I think I'd rather have both Trample and Protection from Tefri Bounces. Protection from Tefri Bounces on Stone Coil Serpents are pretty big upside. Yeah, yeah, Trawler's, like, really slow. And I feel like Trawler's just not the axis I want to fight on. Like, I feel like Strokes and Disputes are the axis I want to fight on in this matchup. Remember when people wanted Trawler bags? Is too yeah, people mostly just want everything banned all the time. See companions in every format at the moment. God bless companions, by the way. I'd have way less magic memes to tweet out if companions weren't a thing. Ben, they've been hot fire for for crap posting. All right, let's do it. Ban the band list. I don't know. I don't know that I'd go that far, but 
I think, I think the ban list is an appropriate tool for non-rotating formats when things become problems. Tails End. Does Tails End counter Sagas? I feel like Elspeth Conquers Death is the card that I really want to have. Things that counter. Bring back Boyle. Listen. Opinions like that get an appropriate break here, okay? No, I am not making this up as I go. UCD is not a legendary spell, yeah. Okay, so. My opponent obviously has Shatter. But I'm going to go ahead and do this because I don't really care if they Shatter my Destroya because Destroya comes back and then I draw a card. We might even see them Shatter before this mutates on, depending on what, their, what the texture of their hand looks like here. Just to counterspell, eh? Want me to phase you out of time? They do they do have a magical trophy for their pet. So if this gets to mutate on, we get to guaranteed kill Tefri at least, so that's nice. Why is Ice Storm green? Because, yeah, the early sets didn't have super good color by definition. Alright, third third time's a charm when it comes to mutiny on the baby Godzilla, right? Are you invested in stocks of companies? And if so, would you mind telling me which ones? Uh Christy and I have a small number of investments that are managed through an Edward Jones broker. Other than other than providing him with risk tolerance, we don't have any specific specific things, no. I can't I can't tell you offhand where, where the money's tied up in. Based on based on how things were looking like midway through last year, we actually stopped putting money into investments. We didn't pull anything out, obviously, because it's mostly in a Roth account, but we did decline to put more money in, which ended up being a very good move, it looks like. The only advice I have is that Telsa's stock is too high. <laughs> Thanks for 17 months, Bill. Welcome back. Eh. 
I suppose they can Yorian next turn and swap Glass Casket from Baby onto Stone Coil. To my opinion of Street Wraith as a magic card, I think it's a trash design that's close to Gataxian tier. This might be a bad idea. I'd be very surprised if they printed that into Historic. It's god awful. When does registration for the next open become available? Uh, probably not for a little bit. There, there is a chance. Um, there is a chance that we won't have a ton of notice on the next open. It will be sometime end of July or end of June slash early July, because we can't really predict when Christie's gonna pop. Hey, Dr. Kitty, thanks for seven months. So when when Christy eventually pops and then what her recovery looks like afterwards will dictate what uh, the timing on the next open. My wife is going to explode eventually. Only time will tell. Hush little doo 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 doo. -doo. Playing the Just Guy Tempo deck from last night that was super sweet, and as it turns out, it's still super sweet. Yeah, yeah, that one's on my list. That that and Just Guy Window are my top two. I'm gonna narrow narrow them down. Yep. You know, maybe I should have played this. I was holding it to theoretically loot through with a baby Godzilla, but if I would have played this out, I could have, uh, could have flashed it in there. I think the mutate counterspell could have been too strong. I don't know. There's already, like, a lot of things that, like, counter a lot of things, so maybe. There's also, like, a finite number of things that mutate at instant speed, though, so it would have been held up by that a little bit. The just the just guy deck is not super forgiving. It is it is a deck where if you are not good at mulliganing, you are not going to have a good time. It's a deck that rewards you for mulliganing for sure. All right, jump baby here. I think Door to Nothingness could get printed into a store. Okay, I think that's fine. Land sequencing. What about my lands? I think Door to Nothingness is a type of sweet kind of build around card. Alt win condition that would be fine to have into historic. It's a very, very Timmy card. I think I think using the historic anthologies to add Timmy cards to the format is a good good use of the historic anthology. Yeah, bad battle of wits, mazes end. Stuff stuff like that all seems super reasonable. Well poop. Well poop. Uh, door to Nothingness was never a top deck in Standard. It was like borderline playable in Standard at one point, but it was never a top deck. Feeling pretty dead here. This is uh, the portion of the game where they just take over. I think I just go ahead and run this back.
Yep. Let's try and get under him. I'm sad that my last, the two decks I'm down to for, for the event in two weeks, neither of them include the card Baby Godzilla, because I really like this magic card, but he's just a tough sell in terms of focusing on making things competitive. To get Mystic Disputed. Sure. I think I'm again going under to dodge Conqueror's Death. Green Mutate deck doesn't have baby. That's not on my list of decks I'm considering playing, Geoff. What are your thoughts on comparing Teamer and Just Kai Mutate? I think they have a lot of a lot of the same a lot of the same matchups and issues. I am I'm not sure I buy that these decks have the tools they need to get under decks like Yorian consistently. It feels, it feels like these decks just take a little bit too long to get fully set up. And between between the tempo from Tefri and Shatter the Sky and Uro, it's just hard to really develop a game plan. Like this, this game's been a great example, right? Like we kind of do what we wanted to do. We had a thing on two, we mutated onto it, and like they're just going to pick us apart without really trying. We were able to beat the more controlling variation we played against earlier, but I think that was more of a fluke than anything. Feel like these archetypes fall into that category of not quite linear enough, not quite aggressive enough. Not quite not quite linear enough and also not quite interactive enough to really stop what's going over the top of them. Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and Historic. Probably, probably playable. Probably, probably fine. Yikes. Morph Creatures. So the problem with Morph Creatures is that you need a pretty big critical mass of them in order for it to be a reasonable sweet mechanic. And I'm not sure that you want to print that many into the format. I don't know, maybe they do. Yeah, the, Je the Jeskai Luris deck is the closest I've come to really finding something that I enjoy so far in the standard format. That also, that also feels competitive. I really like these Mutate decks. They've been a lot of fun. But in terms of, like, comparing their power level to these Yorian decks, it just doesn't feel like we're playing the same format a lot of the time. The games... The games... The games I win are close, and the games I lose are, are like, runaways. Like, I'm, I'm playing a deck that has to play a ton of lands to curb out to 3, 4, 5 consistently, but then I also don't have a payoff like Agent of Treachery or Yorian to really pay me off in the late game for having that many lands. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what Nathori does. Uh oh. Yeah, we tried we tried an Abzan deck the other day with that card, and we just got completely dumpstered. The games were not close, just got completely run over by the Orient control decks.
My card got ether gusted twice, and then my opponent down ticked their Jeffrey. Is basically about summarizes the experience here. All right, let's try one more. We're one and one and one against Yuri Index. Died pretty thoroughly to Bant there. We're able to best one of the Just Guy ones. I'm sure our next match will also be against Yorian, so we can see how our tiebreaker goes. Yeah, yeah, individual. There's definitely some issues in terms of individual power level of the cards that you're playing. Decks that tend to rely strongly on synergies are often not good enough in today's Magic format. Unless you have something like the Jeskai Luris deck feels like an exception to that rule because Luris gives you redundancy to play your cards out of the bin. And on top of that, it also has really efficient protection for them. It's hard for Mutate to not be a two for one. So I actually disagree with that. I think if you think Mutate often gets you two for ones, you're not playing with this deck. The issue, the issue has nothing to do with two for ones or getting one for one. It has everything to do with the fact that like, what your deck actually has going on when it gets going just largely isn't good enough. I'm playing the Teamer Fires deck with Ultimatum, but you added Yorion, Agents, and a few other cards. Yeah, honestly, like... That's probably worth testing. Hey, Charles, are you still in here, by the way? The person who was here earlier that, that donated for Charles Kyle. Are you okay if I try the Fires deck as your, a Yorian deck, or do you want me to keep it 60 cards? You can let me know. Just a reminder that looting with Baby Godzilla is not optional, so I do have to discard a card here, which sucks. But it is, it is what it is. It sucks, but we have to do it is basically the motto of these War of the Spark Planeswalkers. It's awful, but we don't have a better choice. I don't know. I'm super skeptical, Ash World. Like, everybody... Every, I asked people to tweet me a bunch of decks that they thought were competitive, and a bunch of people tweeted me decks that were actually awful. So, without, without actual experience, I mostly just don't believe people. Anybody that tells me they have a Mopey mid-range pile that's competitive against these Yorian decks, I'm gonna tell you that you're probably wrong unless you show me proof. Go record some videos and put them up for me. Right, so we get to draw a card. I'm gonna go ahead and play Hushbringer here, so this way we don't get Agent's Retreat next turn. Or if we do, it doesn't do anything. not quite dead here. I can put this on here, and then I can put this on here, and then it's four, five, six, seven. So not quite lethal. If I had another blue source, this shark would be lethal, but I don't. Hey, Rasslin, thanks for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So, I think my play here is actually put this underneath here again. 
and then I expect our opponent to play their Yorian next turn. Oh, but Yorian actually doesn't do anything, right? Because of Hushbringer? I would say Yorian can blink Conquerors up, but that actually doesn't matter because of Hushbringer. Yeah, feel free to share a list, Ash World. Ah, uh, this is lethal, right? Hey, AJ Ray, thanks for the 21 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Wanted to do King Caesar as opposed to Shark, because Shark gets Mystic Disputed. Yeah, you can link it here. Discord, Discord or here, whatever's easier. I'm just like envisioning a pile of mid-range value cards that just like never in a million years beat, beat the Yorian decks played by a competent player. I'm very, very jaded. Shark also wasn't lethal. It was only seven damage. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because it's not adding four. I'm used to Stone Coil Serpent where we're adding it. But you're right. It's only plus three power with the shark. I mean, the key to liking any format is having having a deck that you like playing, right? I I will say that my normal business model of playing decks that people submit has not this standard is not kind to that. Playing playing random brews that people are working on has not been particularly successful in this format. Decks. Decks like what the current opponent is playing tend to just gobble up the random deck idea that people have because people tend to want to brew around mid-range type decks and they just can't keep up with these Yorian decks in a million years. Thanks to 8 months, slow future. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And, and honestly, um... I'm not taking many standard submissions right now anyways because I upped the price so there's fewer coming in. But I might I might pivot what we do for standard and take a little bit less viewer submissions and just do more decks that I want to play for the format until we get the next set if the format stays mostly the same. we're going under here again because of Conqueror's Death. Historic Bant Nexus, please. Sounds good, Pino. I mean, we're not really playing less historic now because of the lack of the ladder. Like, as far as what I do here, the constructed events work just as well as the ladder does. I'm not I'm not playing less historic on this stream because of the availability of the ladder. I know I know um you know it, it some people in chat have their ability to play impacted by there not being a ladder, but you know, paying a dollar to play a historic event is whatever. 
Yeah, if if anything, some of the decks that we play, like the Blue Devotion deck we played, for example, I'll probably still play that in Constructed Events because the Mythic Ladder will be less forgiving to some of these brews. Maybe... Maybe I should just do that for Standard, although we're not even at the Mythic Ladder, we're just in Plat. Maybe for some of the worst decks, I should just try the Constructed Events. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, Forklift. I'm not really having having trouble taking submissions for either format at the moment. Both both historic and standard are like 20 plus decks backed up, so we're a couple weeks out at a minimum. <sighs> What's up, oldest son? You brought me a flower? Opponent just taking 800 years to make decisions in a game they basically can't lose. So, go to game three. Catch you later, Fistful of Kittens. They say he's got to go, baby Godzilla. Do, 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 This for two. Go Raptor into Baby here. This survives Clarion next turn at least, so we've got that going for us. This feels, this feels like a game we can win. He says before he gets Aether Gusted. Alright, 
right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it makes me really sad to say this because I really like the mutate mechanic. It's one of my favorite things out of the new set. I don't think these tempo-y, pressure-oriented, kind of mid-rangey mutate decks are competitive. They just, they can't get under the Yorian decks. They can't, they don't have good enough interaction to play through it. The fact that they get tagged by Mystic Dispute and Aether Gust and that Tefri resets your things if you're not on a Stone Coil Serpent is just, it's rough. And I, uh, I think I'm gonna shelve any mutate decks other than, like, the big Auspex decks. So, I think I'd take the kind of go big, kind of over-the-top Auspex mutate decks that have seen, that felt reasonable last time. But these kind of tempo-y, pouncing Shore Shark decks are ones I'm gonna start, uh, no surring from here on out. Yeah, until, and mutate could be a thing, like, you know... Like, if you remember the Explore package before Guilds of Ravnica, like, Explore was super competitive during Guilds, but it wasn't competitive at all before that rotation happened. So, like, once the format rotates and things slow down, Tefri's gone, Aethergust is gone, like, we might see, might see this mechanic be more competitive than it is today. At any rate, that's going to be it for me for today, folks. I appreciate everybody that hung out through the end. I'll be back again tomorrow morning. I believe tomorrow is an all-arena day. Yep, yep, tomorrow we're going to do uh, two to three historic decks and then two to three standard decks uh, afterwards. And then remember, I'll be off on Tuesday and Friday this week. Uh, shout out to my subs. I wouldn't be here without all of you. So thanks for keeping me around. Everybody stay safe out there wherever you're at in this crazy world. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. But one more ad roll on my way out the door. Peace.